Hi there. In this lecture, Bobby Fischer plays against Vladimir Brozovich Tukmakov. This is in round one of the Buenos Aires tournament. And Fischer kicked off with B3. Nimzo Larsen attack, as it later became known as. As Larsen had great success with it. Ben Larsen had great success with this. Uh, okay, he did, he did have a major disaster in the 1970 USSR versus rest of the world match uh, when he played Boris Spassky. But apart from that, he's had good results of it overall. So Fischer imitating Larson here and maybe sending a message to the chess board that he can actually play quite a bit now, different openings, not just one E4. We see E5, Bishop B2, Knight C6. And now c4. This is very interesting. Fisher's idea, it seems, is to kind of get reverse Sicilian defense. If ever black plays with d5, we have a kind of reverse Sicilian defense. And in the Sicilian defense, we're looking at an outpost on, pardon me, we're looking at an outpost on c5. If ever c takes, we'll be looking at that c5 square as an outpost square. And we'll be playing it a little bit like the Sicilian defence in in a few positional themes. We see knight f6, e3, bishop e7, and now a3. Black castles, d3, so this is the Scheveningen kind of pawn structure, and black does actually play d5. So we have Fischer playing, in a way, a reverse Sicilian defence styled position. Knight c3, queen d6, knight f3, bishop f5, Queen c2, rook fd8, rook d1, h6, h3, and we have queen e6, and now knight d2 is played. There is a possibility of playing g4, but it's not that effective. You might think caveman style, does it work here? Not particularly well. Black always has things like f5 and knight takes accepting maybe an isolated pawn short term but gets you know a pretty decent position should be about equal even if white has that semi open g file it's not the end of the world necessarily for black so knight d2 here foregoing the hack attack possibilities knight d7 bishop e2 king h8 we have white castling bishop g6 and note that with the bishop committed here on g6, this diagonal could be interesting for white later with this light square bishop. We see b4, and there is an outline that the c5 square could be a good outpost square for white. a6, rook c1, rook ac8, rook fd1. And now this seems a little bit controversial, but I'm not sure what black is really doing here. This is a very interesting position after f5 it seems as though you know pawns don't go backwards if the pawn has the option later of playing f6 which is foregone then this bishop could be blunted on the diagonal as it is this bishop's got a great plan potentially not only to use um, d4 to liberate the bishop later but the c5 post as well as part of that plan for d4 so knight a4 is played knight a7 and fisher wants to leave a piece on c5 not a pawn, and he plays knight b3 now, so both knights looking at that c5 square. And black now plays b6. This already seems as though black's on a slippery slope here. It leaves the a6 pawn unprotected, which means a later d4 is more effective for white as it opens up an attack against a6 from this bishop. So this is already, it seems as though black's already going subtly wrong here. Instead, if king h7, though, you know, d4 is already kind of interesting as well with knight ac5. For example, here, both knights could torture and tickle b7. And the queen is also running out of squares. For example, here, knight c4, d5, kicking the queen, d6. And things get nasty, you know, white could end up winning material in all sorts of weird and wonderful ways. So, you know, if queen c6 here, again, you know, the queen could be kicked around and potentially trapped and won with knight e5 looking at the queen to munch the queen. So it's it's a very dangerous situation here. That's just an example of king h7. If b5, knight ac5, this situation, 
is is interesting as well. You know, Bishop takes e5, just hang. You know, Black's just hanging a pawn there. But otherwise, you know, Queen f6 doesn't seem that great for you know things like f4. If Queen f6, but also even more, you know, maybe stronger than f4, d4, just d4, just opening up this dark square bishop. And here, Knight b7 as an example. Bishop takes g7 check as one example of disaster, winning d7. There are lots of possibilities. Yeah, d4 opens up that default for to tactics as well. If we look at queen g8, this is just showing how bad the position is. d4 again, you know, knight a5. This situation with d5 opening up that bishop, x-raying the king here, it's a really great bishop. If b5, bishop d4 as an example, and things get nasty here. For example, to c6, what's that knight doing on a7? You know, after g4, queen takes e4, white stands hugely better. Fantastic bishop on d4 here. For example, this situation, much better for white. So yeah, all of these stars, they seem to be quite bad for black already. But b6, yeah, b6 was played. And we have d4 here, which hits a6. We have f4 trying to, you know, hit the queen and maybe get some counterplay, but it's hard to see the actual concrete counterplay black has. Instead of f4, you know, if e4, d5, hitting the queen, and bishop takes a6, things are getting nasty. Just, you know, winning the exchange here. Well, okay, even if d1's taken, it's still going to be better for for white. All of these scenarios are just better for white here anyway. And not only that, you know, there's, there's other potentials potentially uh, on the C file. It's it's just horrendous, basically. If we look at uh, E takes D four, Knight takes again. This look at these bishops. It's just absolutely beautiful. Winning material potentially winning an exchange like that. So it's a really beautiful position already. It seems as though at move twenty one, Fisher has. Use an unusual opening and just has a crushing position. We have e4, and now you know because black's weakened these light squares, bishop g4 is in the air potentially. And we see knight b5, and bishop g4 is played here, queen f6, and now d takes e5. Ouch! Look at this crossfire of these bishops. Black offers the exchange, it's pretty lost. By this point, it's completely busted the position. Queen f7, there's things like e6, even forking knight and queen as an example, just taking on d7. It's all ouch town. Knight takes e5, a world of pain. Knight takes e5, it's played just losing the exchange. Rook takes it now, rook d5, torturing the pin, and black resigns here. If queen f7 then we just take on e5 fair enough you know uh, there's nothing much going on here it's just loads of material up um if bishop d6 can you see what white plays here so this seems on the surface bishop d6 but what does white play what do you reckon white to play here what would you play there's a way of getting a huge advantage even more with knight takes b6 using the pin of the c pawn and if the rook moves, bishop takes, rook takes, and then we can actually play knight d7 as well, winning even more material. Yeah, it's it's a horror show, this game. It's no less than some sort of horror show. You know, bishop takes again, knight d7. The whole game is a bit of a horror show and shows, amazingly, you know, Fisher has got some other weapons of chess destruction to reveal even as early as move one and this of course b3 <laughs> i have been using myself one b3 but not in this positional manner as a kind of reverse to see in the fence more of a hack attack system at very fast time controls like bullet i have to confess or even you know blitz because i do find i've been winning a lot of games on the diagonal it's one of my favorite pet toys one b3 so it's amazing to see this fisher game in 1970 it's such a devastating game and a positional treatment as a kind of reverse sicilian shaveningen structure where you have that, that those flexible pawns 
waiting to be pushed at the right moment to open up pieces, waiting for the opponent to create some weaknesses like f5. As soon as f5 is played, then you know the d4 is more effective because there's no blunting of the bishop with f6. The pawn can't go backwards to f6. So yeah, we see a really, really effective bishop once d4 has been played. And I've actually played a similar plan myself in a very, very long time control uh, tournament at Gibraltar once where they had a huge increment. I played a similar plan of playing for for a d4. Once f5 is played, you know, pawns don't go backwards. That diagonal and the c5 outpost come into play here, both um, so and that hits a6. So we're getting a lot of positional advantages accumulating here, and these accumulation of small positional advantages end up being crushing, and that's you know the Steinitz accumulation of advantages theory. Our first uh, world chess champion, you know, emphasised this. A great positional treatment here. I'm really amazed and impressed and delighted by this game it's a uh, an off the beat you know for Fisher's openings and shows how devastating he can be so anyway the game ended here off the rook d5 I hope you enjoyed this game as much as me very very interesting stuff great surprise weapon for blitz here this one b3 and this whole treatment okay thanks very much all comments questions likes and subscribes really appreciated Thanks so much.